Right, so this is it outside. Um, we've got a truck in the workshop today. So you need to excuse the tyres and stuff lying about. But we've put these lights along the outside. Obviously for sitting at night. We do have an awning, it goes on there. I'll drop a wee picture of it um, in with this. Um, and here's your cassette for the toilet and your filler cap. Um, I meant to say all the, the windows are all double glazed as well. Doors double glazed. We're still trying to resource better handles than this. Then we're trying to be flat finished handles. So if anybody knows where you could maybe source something that's a bit flatter than this, if you could possibly drop me a wee message, that would be good. Um, so this is outside, pretty much of the truck. And um, this is actually the donor box of what we had used, what's left of it. So we'd cut 17 and a half feet um, and then we chopped 18 inch of the height and basically supported it all, glued it all back together and sealed it all. Um, so going on to the back, we obviously had to build a complete new back end on it. So that's all reinforced inside with 40 mil box section, it's all crisscrossed. Um, we've actually done quite well with this, we're only 6 millimetres out, which I think is quite an achievement for doing it in a garage. So usual stuff on the back, we've got ladders, we've got waffle boards, we do have a winch on here, the plan was to put one of the spare wheels on here, but I'm not convinced mate because I think that the wheel might just be a bit too heavy for it, so we're going to re-locate the wheel under here, so we need to move uh, the air tanks and stuff like that, so that's something that we're going to do over the winter. So going into the first part here of the, the garage, um, you can see in here we've got some lights and stuff. We always just carry a wee spare gas bottle just in case. So usual stuff, that's where our water tank is. So there's a 450 litre water tank in there. We need to finish that wee bit up the top. The plan is to possibly get a couple of wee electric scooters and we'll put them in there. That's where the sliding door is to go back into the habitation side there. This all comes out, it's all built in sections, so if we ever need to get that tank out, it's probably a day's work by the time we uh, unbolt everything and, and take it all back out. So usual stuff, torque wrench and boxes, storage boxes, metal detector, fishing rods, wetsuits, blah blah blah, and a couple of wee beers. So that's that. So we'll go around to the other side and you can see where um, the water treatment system and stuff is. So, I'm just making sure I'm still on. I my trusted ladders. So in behind here we've got access. Um, this all kind of does. And you can get in there to get the, the water tank. Pretty simple for filling and stuff. We just use one of these. We've got an extension there. And, uh, water filtration. So it's two stage. Um, and obviously a kind of electric pump. Self priming pump. Um, it does about, I think it's about 6 or 8 litres a minute, which is plenty for what we need. We smoke alarms everywhere as well, there's actually smoke and carbon monoxide one inside. And that's the trimmer, I think it's an 8 litre, um, which is perfect for just the two of us. Uh, it heats up pretty quick, get good flow off it. Um, not really any issues with that, so that's all good in there. So same again on this side, well, the handles are fine on the inside, just the outside. So we've got a couple of these storage boxes as well, in the chassis. Usually we keep the wee barbecue and stuff in there. Uh, your vent, your 240, and that's your vents for the, the fridge and what have you. We just get 100 litre grey waste, which is perfect. And there's a big fuel tank. We're actually going to extend that. With Going to see if we can get some that's going to come out a bit bigger. Um, add blue, Euro 5 right enough, so that'll do a job. That's where our ladders go to get into habitation. So this is the front of the truck. Uh, we'll fire it up, I'll show you what sort of lights and stuff we've, we've got on it. 
So I'll turn off the new and I'll pick these back up in a minute again once we get everything all fired up. So this is the, the front. Uh, we put quite a lot of lights on it. Obviously I'm just sitting with the, the side lights on it at the moment. We've still got to replace these. Um, and up here as well. We've got two nice big long beam spot lamps up there. And the same one on the bottom. We put all these side lights on as well for parking up at night so you can pretty much see where you're parking if you're parking anywhere it's quite tight which we usually do it so perfect visibility all around some on the top as well and then the same up this side they are quite bright and here as well we put the, the blue mood lighting down on the the door checks, there's another one up the top, so that's kind of takes care of the, the light run a bit. Yeah, the reason we've done this was because we've got stuff on the other side, uh, if we're parked somewhere at night we can just put these on, these are all running off a 12 volt, which runs off the, the leisure batteries. So going in, the truck always makes loads of noises, that blue pump, <laughs> sounds like it's crying. So one side we've got, turn this off, we've just got our reversing camera which is kind of on all the time because I like to see who's actually behind us. So the seats are on full air suspension, we've also got white lighting in here, we've got a CB radio and um, we've got a Kenwood touchscreen, uh, so a DAB um, through your, your phone and what have you as well. we would actually totally upholstered all the back. Um, but we are going to need to order this out at some point, obviously, to do the, the cut through. The plan is to do the cut through through to here and have a flap door, and that will come down onto here um, so that when you're crawling through, you've got something kind of hard to crawl onto. Um, so that's Natasha's wee seat. She's got a nice wee stool down there, I don't know if you can see it or not because you have wee short legs. But that helps her for bouncing a bit. So that's a cab. Still get a tachograph, need to keep that in. Uh, you don't need to calibrate it or that, but because we're class 4. Um, but basically, what you need to do is stick it, what they call out, a scope, and then it doesn't really give you any problems. I'll just turn this back in. Put them back on. So, yeah, basically, from start to finish, the build. Doing it in your kind of spare time and working some weekends. Um, two years, 11 days until we got it on the road. Now, the, the actual spring mounted system that we've got, because that's a whole new subframe that we made for the bottom of it, we've just went for the good old spring system. Um, you can see the torsion springs there, nice and evenly spaced. We've done our calculations for it and stuff, um, and this is what we've been told to do. So, the wheels are ex military 365 85x20 20 on 20 inch split rims, and they're 10 stud. And we've got a wee collection of them, quite expensive to buy. The good thing about these is that we don't have to comply with a 10 year rule because we're not HTV. So the other benefit with these is if you're going to do one of these conversions, if you do it right, then you can get it down to class 4 and you can still keep a plated weight providing you've got category C on your license then you shouldn't have any issues. We've not had any issues spoke to some police and um, they're saying we're, we're totally legal so that's good for us we've been putting other different wee things on as well we've put an anderson plug or a jack plug or some people may call them that's just for 24 volt in case we need to jump start anything and you can see the the spring system double mounted two springs and they run pretty much right to the back axle and then that's when you change the slight configuration 
and then just solid bolts on the back. As long as you get a good bit of twist, there's a calculation for doing all this. I don't really want to go into it all because it is quite complex, but basically uh, you've got to work out the twisting structure of the front of the chassis just after the cab, and that'll give you an idea of how many um, springs you need and what distance you sh should have them apart. So that's our new side rails. Uh, and we got them from Commercial Body, been in, I think they're Leicester. Thanks very much for them, excellent stuff, dead easy to work with. Great company to work with, absolutely no problems. That's new mud wing poles as well. A lot of people don't bother with these. You don't, they're not compliant, these aren't compliant. But I think it just finishes the truck a lot better. And it uh, gives you a wee bit more. Um, have a better look, I think, more than anything else. So we've got a couple of air horns at the top as well. They're quite loud. There's a couple of other wee spotlights up there. Um, sun visor we put on as well. Um, we had to put lashing points on just in case we go into any of the ferries and they, they decide that we need them. Pretty much where we are here. They're all right because it's mostly all short crossings. It's not until you maybe try and go to Ireland or somewhere, then they might be a, be a different kettle of fish. But for you, it's kind of new. This is our channel. So go on and have a wee look. We've only been doing this a couple of months. So if we can get any pointers on how to do it a bit better, then we'll certainly take note. Um, but apart from that, that's really the truck. So, thanks very much for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>